for the record, I want my other guy to say, you kids get off my lawn. <laughs> Uh, this is called I'm Sorry to Have to Tell You This. This is your captain speaking. We're currently cruising at an altitude of 35,000 feet, and uh, we're a little ahead of schedule thanks to a friendly tailwind of 65 knots. Those of you on the left side of the cabin can uh, look out your windows and see the reservation where I was born. It doesn't look like much from up here, but uh, it was my home for 17 years. Tell you the truth, it didn't look like that much back then either. That's why I'm up here, I guess. This is your captain speaking. There's a storm up ahead, and uh, we're expecting a bit of turbulence, so I'll be putting on the seatbelt sign. You might want to eat the more spillable parts of your lunch first. Nah, just kidding, folks. This is your captain speaking. You're all aware by now that uh, conditions are a little rougher than we'd anticipate. But it's nothing to worry about. Just uh, keep your seatbelts fastened and refrain from moving around the cabin unless absolutely necessary. If you need any assistance, don't hesitate to ring one of our devoted flight attendants. I'm sorry to tell you that uh, we won't be serving beverages until things calm down. It's going to be a bumpy ride, folks. This is your captain speaking. I'm sorry to tell you that uh, we haven't been cleared for our final approach due to uh, an indicator light on our hydraulic panel. Now, if you wanted me to bet on faulty indicator lights versus real hydraulic problems, well, my money's on that light every time. <laughs> but to be on the safe side, of course, we'll be going through our checklist uh, as we begin our descent in a couple of minutes. And uh, we appreciate your patience, folks. This is Captain Red Cloud speaking. It's been a long flight, hasn't it? No movie, short lunch, just like covered wagon days, huh? <laughs> and we're following the same route here, too. Well, we're keeping it together up here in the North 40. I believe in keeping my passengers fully informed, so uh, I'm going to tell you that uh, that little indicator light was right after all. But that's why we have them, so that we can keep people informed and uh, act quickly when things don't go the way that they're supposed to. And right now, what's not being very cooperative is our um, left wing flaps. <laughs> we can't turn left. Now, before you jump to any conclusions, let me reassure you that uh, we can turn right till the cows come home. <laughs> And there's nowhere that a little left turn can go that a big right turn can. <laughs> so if it feels to you like we're going round in circles as we begin our descent in a couple minutes, just think of it as getting on a clover leaf on the freeway. Only this is a lot safer because no one's going to try to cut us off up here. We apologize for the difficulties, folks. <clears throat> Flight attendants to their stations. This is your, this is Captain Red Cloud speaking. I know it seems like we've been going round and round. <laughs> it turns out our um, right side flaps have locked in place. And we're working on getting them free. <clears throat> like the great spirit said, it's always something. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you that I want to land every bit as much as you do. <laughs> Though I'm not sure why. I'm supposed to live my life in the air. You probably think it's because I'm a pilot, but that's not it. It's because when I was 17, grandfather gave me a medicine bag and a feather from a hawk. I can't tell you what was in the medicine bag. You probably think we wore those hippie fringe jackets and lived in teepees. I drove a truck for a lumber yard, went out on dates at drive-ins, I ate Big Macs and fries. I walked out on the desert with just what I had on, with my medicine bag and my feather, and I fasted for three days. Any of you ever go without eating for more than 24 hours? Nah, of course you haven't. Well, the first day is pretty bad. You get migraines. That third day is terrific. You're hollow. You have bones like a bird. When you walk, you move like one of those Macy's parade floats. <laughs> And it's 105 in the shade, yeah. You can't even drink your own sweat anymore because that dries up. You see some 
some strange things. I can't tell you about a lot of them, at least I won't, but um, I saw a saguaro that waved, and it was Coyote come to tell me some stories. Coyote's a shapeshifter, you know, and uh, well, he likes his little jokes. But one of the things he told me is that we're all <coughs> shapeshifters. He laughed when he said it, and it was kind of a mean laugh. He said he knew I didn't believe it, but he told me that I would learn that it was true. I saw a hawk, too. He had a feather missing from his wing. And when I saw that, I knew what I was supposed to do. I offered Hawk the feather that grandfather had taken from him years ago. And he led me to my vision. You probably think I left all that kind of thing behind when I left the reservation, but really, I'm living my vision while I'm talking to you. I wear a white uniform and got shoulder epaulets and a cap with gold braids. And I'm called captain even though I never made it past private in the Air Force. Buck private, they called me. Good one, huh? And I have a timeshare condo in La Jolla and an apartment on the east side. I go out to eat a lot. I watch cable TV. I listen to rock and roll. I like rock and roll. I never saw Hawk or Coyote again. But underneath my tie, I wear this little leather thong, a leather bag on a thong, you see? And I fly. Because in my vision, I was a flying man. And I flew into a cloud. And the cloud turned red. That's how grandfather picked my name. And I knew when Hawk showed me my vision that I was supposed to fly. I mean, really fly. So to be true to my vision, I had to leave the reservation. To be an Indian, I had to become a white man. But I did it. And that's why I'm not so sure why I'm as eager to land as the rest of you are. Because when I'm up here, I'm living my vision. Because I'm flying all of you, you're living my vision too. And when I'm up here, I'm with the spirits of the air. And I'm alive. And so you are spirits too. And alive, all of you, turning right and right with me. Have you ever seen a hawk like Thermal? <laughs> but I know I'm a red man and I'm just running a machine. This is metal that rakes the air. My spirit's just along for the ride, you see? I talk on the radio, and I look for flashing red lights. In a way, though, it's more magical than any of grandfather's stories. He told me that the great spirit made a river. But the river had nothing to hold it and nowhere to go to, so he made the earth. Then he scooped up some river mud and it had some clay in it. So he used the clay to make a man and a woman. Then I found out from books that what really happened was that we came out of the ocean and we learned how to crawl and breathe. And then we went up into the trees and we came back down again and learned how to walk. To me, this isn't any crazier than any of your grandfather's stories. <laughs> but here's the thing. There's this river mud, see? And it wants to be a bird. But it can't figure out how to be a bird. So it learns how to make birds. So at the same time, it's kind of a miracle. It also never really learns how to be a bird. Or maybe it just forgets. I don't know. But nothing else has ever done this. Not where the river runs. So uh, I guess you can see I'm a little torn about all this. My grandfather would say I have two hearts. I'm sorry, but uh, I have to go talk on the radio now. This is your captain speaking. I know you're all afraid. But don't be. Don't be. I'm the one up front who wrestles with this metal bird with a feather missing from its wing. I look at its eyes, and Hawk is somewhere up ahead. And I'm not afraid. It's a dance we do, you see. Everything is a dance. That's what Coyote told me. <coughs> Just because it's crazy doesn't mean it isn't true, he said. A part of us remembers the river. So look at the person next to you and dance with him. Dance with her. 
not by moving. You don't have to move to dance. Dance with your eyes, with your tongue, with your heart. Tell him the thing you never told him. Show her the thing that is in your heart. Do you know what a privilege it is to know you have a final chance to say those things? Do you know how rare it is to know that you can have a final dance? If he is a stranger, tell him. Turn on the metal and plastic and foam chair and tell her. She isn't a stranger. None of us are strangers. This is your captain saying you are a captain too. We are shapeshifters soon to change. And I am not afraid. Thank you.